Hey there, thinkers. Welcome back to another episode of Critical Hit. My name is Est. And I'm Finn. And today we're going to talk about Disney again. But we're talking about Disney because another contender has entered the ring. We got uh, a value act, another investor, act as investor, I should say, is entering the ring and competing against Disney for another board seat. A seat or just one individual? So right now they haven't disclosed <laughs> their positioning, what they're trying to do. Um, Take over. Yeah, so... <laughs> So we're going to talk about uh, this. We're going to discuss a little bit of what's going on with, of course, Nelson Peltz, who covered that in the past. We're going to talk about Value Act a little bit. We're going to talk about the Disney woes, and we're going to talk about what we see happening in the future. All right. Well, let's get into it. So this is from the Financial Times. Value Act stake adds to activist investor pressure on Walt Disney. Wall Street is pushing media group to curb profligate, spending the focus on streaming prop profligate. What? Yeah, it just means uh, reckless, wasteful spending, let's say. Um, crazy, big words. Uh, <laughs> Value Act Capital has built a significant stake in Walt Disney, adding another activist investor to the entertainment company shareholder list as it contends with, with a sinking share price and a decline in its traditional television business. The San Francisco-based firm has not disclosed the size of its stake in Disney, but among its largest positions said people familiar with the situation. And Value Act started building its position in the media group this summer. So yeah, what's important with this is Value Act, of course, is called an activist investor here. Now we've talked about this before in some of our videos with Nelson Peltz, but activist investor does not mean activist in the sense that you think. Um, you know, green hair. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not even going to describe what I'm seeing in my head because it's going to offend a whole bunch of people. Maybe I should. No, I'm, I'll leave it there. But um, what you think an activist would look like, that's not it. <laughs> Instead, it just means they're taking a very large minority stake, or at least a larger minority stake in a company. And so what good news I have about Value Act is that they're a private hedge fund that invests in equity companies. They have, uh, in this article, I believe it says about $12 billion. Otherwise, I've been able to see they have about $10 billion. Um, can't find a definitive number overall their actual uh, market value of their company, um, or assets in general, I guess, but somewhere between 10 and $12 billion, let's say which is pretty significant, of course. We know Nelson Peltz has a 2.5 billion stake in Disney right now, including the shares he has with Ike Perlmutter. But the important thing here is, like I said, they are not an activist investor. They care about making money. They don't care, even though they're a hedge fund, they don't care about ESG. That mean a little bit. They, they talk about a little bit in the corporate governance site, but as a, as a very far off consideration. And so even though you say one thing, actions speak louder than words. So let's talk about some of the things that they have done yeah, in the past. Money talks. Money talks. What do your actions say? <laughs> so uh, they did have a very big stake, uh, at least uh, large-ish, let's say, in Microsoft. I shouldn't say very big. It was less than 1%. But they had $2 billion worth of Microsoft stock back in 2013. And that was Value Act? That was Value Act, yeah. They actually, they, what they wanted at the time was they wanted them to increase their share price through stock uh, buyback and through increasing the dividend. And this, they put so much pressure on them, even owning that little of the company, let's say, that, that it was actually speculated, their CEO at the time, Steve Ballmer, and really he left because of how much pressure he faced, or at least it speculated how much pressure he faced from Value Act and trying to get them to raise their share price. Pushback and Sam for things that he wanted to put into Microsoft, but they didn't want him? It's, well, no, he wanted them to get them to raise their stock price. Okay. That's what Value Act wanted, and they got their way in the end. I mean, look at Microsoft stock lately, by the way. Now, though this is back in 2013, still, if you had invested back then, you'd be sitting pretty if you held it till now. Uh, especially this year, been a fantastic performing asset. But anyways, I digress. Uh, another big one was uh, they had a 7% stake in the New York Times, and they wanted to encourage them to have a bundle uh, of, of sorts that they sold. Uh, and again, this has nothing to do with ESG in any form I've seen through what they've done. And another one was they just, in this article, it's going to cover it as well, that they had a large share in Salesforce. And just last year, they uh, got a member on the board through having a 7% stake in Salesforce. So as you can see, activist investors can make quite the big difference, even without owning a majority stake in a company. Yeah, because they throw their weight around. Absolutely, they do. They're just like, yeah, well, I'm not going to do this for you then. <laughs> well, because then I can elect someone else to the board because yep. all the shareholders vote who's on the board. And from there, the board chooses who the CEO is. So if you want to secure your job CEO, you got to listen to these people. Money yeah. first, pandering later. 
So with all that said, what the important thing is here, Nelson Peltz is on a warpath against Disney because he wants to make more money. Mm -hmm. Value Act is not there to save Bob Iger. But now that we've told you about Value Act, to continue into the article, shares of Disney rose 3% Wednesday morning after the CNBC revealed Value Act stake. Disney shares have fallen 40% over the past two years as the company has grappled with a streaming business is losing money and the decline of its once spinning traditional television channels. Chief Executive Bob Iger returned a year ago to turn the company around as cut some 8,000 to turn the company around. He hasn't turned the company around, but uh, <laughs> has cut some 8,000 jobs in a move to slash costs. Yeah, so they just came out with their financials uh, last week. It was on the 8th, and their financials actually looked a lot better than I was anticipating. I was thinking about covering it, but realistically, I don't have a lot more to say than investors are really back at it thinking that growth may be more important than making money. Now, I don't want to say they didn't make money. They actually did overall for the year. A couple hundred million, they really curbed some of their big losses which is what you want to see with the company, but still, that's a far cry from the billions they were making a couple years prior. So that, there is a big difference, and I don't think Disney's share price deserved to rally that I think it was about eight or 10% overnight it did that night, but really and truly what you looked at was growth. Disney Plus stopped losing subscribers, it was gaining them, and I think investors actually cared about that again, even though they kind of looked like they didn't for a while. Well, no, because eventually, and downstream, they do wind up making money off of it. Possibly. You know, they're not allowed to count <laughs> a couple really. things. They're not allowed to count a couple things when you make subscribers, but they did have some pretty good deals leading into their end of year, such as two ninety nine for the next three months kind of thing. Yeah. Trying to boost those subscriber numbers a little bit. You know, I'm just speculating a little bit here, but some of that could definitely add to their let's say growth I think in numbers. It's a dollar ninety nine, by the way. It could have been. Sometimes they're not allowed to report those things. But either way, I'm sure they found a way to. But Disney, like other large US media groups, has been under pressure from investors to curb profligate spending during the streaming boom as Wall Street has shifted its focus towards profitability. And again, that word just means um, reckless spending, wasteful spending, uh, which they have done in droves, by the way. <laughs> Over the past year and a half, activists including Don Lobb and Nelson Peltz have sent their sights on Disney. Peltz's uh, Tryon partners have recently upped its stake in the group and is seeking multiple board seats after initially calling off its proxy battle earlier this year. Value Act, a firm with $12 billion in assets that is run by co-chief executives Mason Morfitt and Robert Hale, in February disclosed a stake in music streaming group Spotify. And in January, the fund secured a board seat at software giant Salesforce, which had also come under pressure from several activist investors. And of course, they actually got their seat on that board. Like I said, all active investors typically want to make money. No one is a friend of Bob Iger's here, which is Disney's, at the, of course, at the moment. And for the last 15 years, Disney has been stacking. Bob Iger's been stacking the board in his favor. He can't get fired. It's like he has tenure there. Well, yeah, and he has, like, you know, he has made waves within the company. He has made changes, but unfortunately, the changes within the last, like, couple of years have been not so great. Problem is, they're so indebted after buying companies like Marvel, Fox, Star Wars, Pixar. Mm -hmm. You know, the list goes on here. Hulu now they're buying. They're so indebted. They don't, I mean, when they bought Fox, they were only a $100 billion company. <sighs> Fox, they bought for $80 billion. Of course, they didn't have the cash to do that. They used a lot of stock offers. They used a lot of debt to do that. And now that they're so indebted, their creditors, some of the biggest ones being BlackRock, for instance, yep. uh, are forcing them to do ESG. But here's where th this matters. BlackRock only has, I think it's about an 8% stake in Disney. But these other companies that are taking significant minority stakes in Disney, they want to make a profit. So this is where you're going to see a battle of money. And if Bob Iger wants to keep his job, he's going to have to thread a very fine line here. I mean, he's already going to go out as the man who at least started the downward spiral of Disney. Who knows if it goes into nothing at the moment, but these investors are not on his side is what I want to get through on this. And this is just more and more pressure on Disney to change its ways. Disney is one of the biggest entertainment conglomerates right now in North America. Yeah. No one wants to see them fail. Everyone wants to buy them to see them make money. And I've already read that the re big reason that they think they should be doing it, Value Act, is that they think Disney should be trading somewhere in the vicinity of $120 to $190 per share. They think the $80 per share is just representative of what they're worth in North America for their theme parks. They have actually a very good uh, comprehensive kind of bio strategy for what they understand and what they're looking for out of the, what they're trying to seek, let's say. And one of the big things here is they just want money. They want Disney to make money because they want to make money. Because that's, uh, that's what everyone should want when you're in a capital market. But this is uh, another person in the contender here. 
to really put the put Disney's feet to the fire, Bob Iger's feet to the fire, and try to get them back on track. I'm pretty excited to see this go forward because I think, if anything, Nelson Peltz and Value Act will team up because they want the same thing. Yeah, they're going to want dividends. Right the straight and narrow. And they're going to want Disney price uh, share price up. They're, and to, to do that, you need to become profitable. I mean, they're already a little bit like we discussed, but really they wanted them to make lots of profits. How do they do that? Give the customers what they want. Yeah, like you can make some money or you can make more money. Well, and really they're just making money right now because they had to cut so much cost. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying cutting costs is a bad thing. Disney absolutely needed to. I mean, the Marvel's cost it reports up to 300 oh my million. Gosh, yeah. And that movie is not worth 300 million dollars. No. And you could make a billion dollars. You could make $2 billion off a good MCU movie again off a Star Wars movie if you just gave the fans what they wanted. And that's all these people don't, they actually don't care if you, whatever you espout, what they care about realistically is to make money. Now everything else will be secondary. Of course, they don't want you to spout some crazy rhetoric, but at the same time, they mostly care about that money. Exactly. Get and them back on track. If your stories right now are not making money, maybe make different ones. But uh, yeah. But that's what I got is uh, pretty exciting news. Value Act, I think, is, is if anything here, is going to really push Disney even harder than Nelson Peltz at this point. Because when you get multiple activist investors involved, yep. you know there's something wrong right now with the corporate governance. You know there's something wrong with the leadership. And they're saying, let's get you back on track. If that takes a new CEO, if that takes a new board, maybe mm -hmm. that's what it takes. But it looks like... The House of Mouse looks like Bob Iger's empire is going to crumble before his eyes. Really unfortunate. But so far we know about two. We'll see if more end up showing up. But mm -hmm. uh, everyone who owns Disney at this point is going to want them to make more money. Exactly. Disney's on sale. Yeah. Well, it was anyways until they started buying. <laughs> exactly right. But that's all I got. You got anything else? <laughs> no, I've got nothing else to say. If you made it this far, please do like and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video. Doodles. Bye, guys. <laughs>